I have been working on this tower defense typing game for more than 200 days now. You heard that right, tower defense typing. You type on your keyboard to build towers, trigger attacks, recharge ammo, and just even navigate the menu. Now this project is very important to me because this will either make or break me. Because I had decided I will either finish this project or die trying. Okay, it's not that dramatic, but I don't want to be a programmer who only ships tiny unpolished games. I want to make something so good, people would actually want to pay for it. And I'm getting close to finally ship this game. It is more than halfway done. Of course, it's hard to quantify, and generally, the last 20% of the project is the hardest one. It is finally time to show the world the progress I've made, all the unexpected game design problems and opportunities I've encountered, considering this is a never seen before combination of game genres. So let's start from day zero. As with all new projects, I was flying high. New projects, new possibilities. I was excited. No one has ever made a commercial tower defense typing game. Maybe I will be the first. Of course I decided I would make this game with the Rust programming language and the Bevy game engine. I love these tools and I will probably never stop learning them. Now little me back then didn't have everything figured out. I didn't know the game would end up having a story, yes it has a story. I also didn't know I would end up implementing roguelike mechanics. All I knew was I wanted to make a tower defense game where you type to do actions. So that is what I built. First I needed a map where the units could traverse. What I did is that I constructed this landscape mesh from images that looks just like this. In this image I can also define the start and end position for the units to pathfind to. I of course implemented typing, which actually doesn't do anything at this point. Now you might be looking on a few days of work. This was simply the first commit I ever made. What a humble beginning. We jump forward 12 days. And things are starting to take shape. We can build towers, they shoot projectiles, and enemies now have health. Just a day later I had to greatly improve the UI because towers could now be upgraded. Upgrading a tower simply modifies some stats to make it stronger. But not only that, we can now also pick different tower classes. Now being an early build the classes were all hard coded and the only difference between the towers is their color. I was starting to become bored with these blocks everywhere, they look uninteresting visually. So I implemented 3D sprites for both enemies and towers. Now we also have different enemy types, which of course was hard coded at the moment. And towers can now also play animations when they shoot. Now let's jump ahead almost two weeks, because I spent a long time doing a massive rewrite of the codebase. Towers and enemies are now defined in asset files. Now I can quickly add new game content, just by adding a few files and tweaking some values. Now the game doesn't look that different from two weeks ago, but if we take a look under the hood, we'll see just how customizable everything is starting to become. Tower graphics, stats, what happens when you upgrade, we can even define what class towers can evolve into. The codebase is starting to become really solid. Now this tiny change would come to shape a fundamental game mechanic I love, namely the roguelike nature of this game. I added a level system, enemies drop experience and gold, and we can now level up. Leveling up doesn't actually do anything at the moment, but as you'll see in the future, it is one of the most impactful game mechanics I've implemented. Having implemented a gold currency, you know how to pay to buy upgrades and towers. I wanted to experiment with the typing mechanic, so I implemented a shield for the enemies. Enemies are invulnerable when the shield is active, and you have to type out the word to remove the shield. Now the reason I jumped ahead 11 days is because this was simply a pretty low productivity period of time. The reason I was so unmotivated this period was that I was implementing screen decluttering of words. It's important that the text doesn't overlap, it would look very weird in the UI. Programming this UI behavior was not fun at all to implement. At this point the game is actually starting to become fun and challenging. New enemies with different speeds, we can now define projectile graphics, I added some sound effects. Now when you level up, you get the chance to pick a new power up. Of course, the UI only says you win, but, but trust me, behind the scenes, this is a power up menu. Leveling up now finally gives you three options to pick from. Currently you can only gain gold or get a free tower. The game doesn't have that much content yet, but pretty much everything is defined through asset files. All the power-ups, how the enemy wave spawns... Towers can now cast spells. It took 5 days to rewrite how projectiles slash spells work. Towers can now have a basic attack or a special spell attack. We are now on day 60 and status effects are now a thing. 
we have a poison tower that deals damage over time and the ice tower actually slows down the enemies. We can now also see how much damage the towers are dealing with these hit points indicators. I like to call this the day of power ups. I added 7 new power ups and they all look fantastic. There's a new power up bar at the top indicating what power ups you've chosen. And even though there are only 3 tower types, ice, poison, archer, well I guess we have 4 tower types if we account for the basic one. Even though that's the only towers we have, the game is actually pretty fun. Here, here, here. You will all be delighted to hear I have added loot boxes. No, not the gambling kind. They are free. They fall down from the sky when you start the level and when you break them open you get random stuff. Well actually, you get the same stuff currently. One box contains a tower and the other box contains some gold. But you don't know which one contains what. Now this day I will call the day of content. I added variations of the ice tower, one applies slow consistently, and the other one you have to trigger the special ice attack. There's a new stun tower, and the stun tower upgrades into two different variants. Now the stun status effect is actually not implemented yet, but the graphics are in. The poison tower can now evolve into this, which spawns a poison blob on the ground. Now it actually doesn't apply poison, because I don't have that mechanic implemented in code yet, so instead it shoots projectiles. Yeah, I know, it's very, very weird. Day 94, the stun status effect is actually now a thing. This tower is so cute, and this one is so cool. There are two new mage towers, one shoots a massive amount of fire when you trigger it, the other one does so regularly. We passed 100 days and we can finally play different levels. And the levels can have different layouts and different enemies. Also, listen to the sound effects. Juicy. I also fixed a major game design problem. Sometimes you would get this horrible placement of the towers at the start, and you would simply have to restart the game 30 seconds in. To fix that, I gave the first three tower placements priority to be placed in the most ideal tower spots. The way that works is that in the level image, I added another color indicating the first three tower placements. Now we jump ahead an entire month, because July was almost exclusively spent on actually adding a decent menu to the game. With this menu comes the ability to start new games, load old games, a bunch of other things. I also now save the levels you have completed, and as you complete levels you also unlock towers that I all put into the save file. Making the UI alone took a long time, but also game balancing and adding missing things like sound effects and art. Time for a landscape graphical overhaul. In combination with creating the map, I also create a procedurally generated landscape around it, with decoration like trees and flowers. It makes a humongous difference. In preparation for making a tutorial for the game, I programmed a system that will allow me to call game events in a timeline. Currently, all we have are actors running around the scene. The actor sequencing have gotten a huge upgrade. We can now use the tower data as actors, they can now talk with this dialogue system and even listen to game events, like don't play the next dialogue until the player builds a tower. With that, we now have a working tutorial. Say hello to a new typing game mechanic. I made this tower that uses ammo, or you can call it mana if you want, and when that's used up, they will stop attacking until you recharge their mana by typing out a word. Now this next feature, I'm surprised how long time it took me to implement this. Health bars. It's pretty useful. There are now 19 power-ups with different rarity. The higher level you get, the more chance you'll get an even more powerful power-up. Oh, and also say hello to our new builder. He will fly around the screen to visualize the words you're working on. And every letter you type, he's going to build on that tower. I don't know if this will be the mascot of the game, but, but it's cool to have some kind of character that represents you. I spent a lot of time just working on content, tweaking and bug fixes. All towers have sound effects, I implemented music for all kinds of scenes. The main menu now has a landscape in the background. About time I did that. I also implemented different damage types. Some enemies can be resistant to physical damage or magical damage. Boom, we have surpassed 200 days. And I added something amazing. You see, testing this game, I have to type so much on the keyboard, which, don't get me wrong, I become really fast at typing. Push, muscle, inspire, bit, work, emit. I'm so good at this. 
but while playtesting this game, wouldn't it be nice if someone could do that for me? So I made this debug tool that automatically plays the game for me. Ah, now it plays by itself. Might as well read the book while it's playing. Harry Potter, is it done yet? Oh crap, he's losing. <laughs> Creature will not insult Harry Potter in front of the Oh, I lost. <laughs> Don't worry, it can play again. This could be incredibly useful in the future. I could have the game play by itself and give out statistics, like how often does the bot fail a level, what power-ups has a high win rate. I am excited to try that out in the future. I also saw the need for some other debug tools, like spawning a specific tower, and just general useful tools for manipulating the game when testing certain features. We can also visualize the pathfinding, which could have been incredibly useful just about 200 days ago, but I'm glad that's a tool I have in the game now. Also particles are starting to appear. We got blood particles and this ice tower shoots out some sparks. Yeah, we're gonna go a few days over 200. I added three new melee towers. A rogue that shoots shurikens that bounce amongst the enemies. An axe-wielding madman with the short range but does AoE damage. And a fast attacking samurai. Oh, and they evolve from this handsome dude. Having implemented this new bounce mechanic, I also added this mage with this electrical spell. Day 224, I finally decided to implement the overworld map. I don't want to use buttons to select levels. Instead, you should walk around the map to get a more immersive experience. And now we are more or less caught up to the current state of the game. Of course, that's just the highlights. The game is in a really good state. I've never come this far with any game project I made when it comes to amount of content and polish. Now, a large part of the replayability of this game lies in the power-ups. No run is the same. Maybe you get many power-ups focused on attack speed or magic damage, crit chance, the random nature of tower placements and what classes you get to choose from, of course also affects what power-ups you want to pick. Sometimes you'll get extremely lucky and powerful, sometimes you're less lucky. That might sound like a bad thing, but I found that even if you get a bit unlucky, there are almost always choices you can make to help save a run. Of course you unlock the levels as you go, and even the towers. The reason you unlock towers as you complete levels story-wise, is that you help defend villages from the invaders, and as you do so, the villagers of that town will come with you. That's the story in a nutshell. I don't have a plan for power-ups to be unlocked as you go, they are all currently available at the start. But that could also be part of the story, you save a village and they happen to have a recipe for an experience power-up or something like that. I know what you're thinking, this game looks incredible, when can I play and buy it? Well my goal is to release the game within 6 months. I am just setting up the steam page, so go and wishlist the game right now. It might not be up when the video is released, but if you're watching this later, go wishlist it now. Now if you want to play the game right now, you can actually do so by becoming a level 3 Patreon supporter. Of course the game is not finished and there's a lot of stuff to implement. So why don't I stop talking and get back to work. Yes. Thank you so much, Patreons is a Drifio at the Little Racing Sandwich, Tainzer, Pepsi Cora, Turbo Waffle, Apex, Alexander, Gerd, Stefan, Never Close the Bun, So thought the level 3 Patreons. I apologize for making this song. <laughs> Ooh.